I analyzed how strong Batman really is so you can understand exactly what he's done to get where he is. Cause after combing through the latest and greatest papers on building and maintaining muscle, Batman is ridiculous and possibly uses some enhancements. In DC's published work called The Batman Files and other media, Bruce Wayne is shown as being able to bench nearly 1,000 pounds, leg press a train apart or otherwise 2,500 pounds, and squat more than his plot armor. Specifically, as we all saw before, The Batman Files show Bruce as going through a constant dredge of workouts day in, day out. Seven days a week that sees him waking up Monday morning after a long night of crusading around Gotham going for a morning jog, then going to work to run a multi-billion dollar company as he later comes back for his second workout of clean and jerks, sparring, more running, more lifting, with his evening workouts ramping up as the week goes on. As nearly every day of the week sees him doing everything from extremely heavy lifts to high repetition, burnout sets, martial arts, advanced gymnastics, with Bruce even throwing himself into a near marathon, running under five minutes per per mile on his off day. While all of this is highly unlikely for him to do on a consistent basis, at least while he's also Batmaning around Gotham, we've been here before. What we haven't discussed though is how strong Batman is likely to actually be if, as the human that he is, he were fully subject to the same physical constraints as the rest of us like he's otherwise supposed to be. To get there, this leads us down a rabbit hole towards one question. How? How does Bruce actually go about working out? Does he use any performance enhancing drugs? If so, what would the state of his health be? And therefore, how strong is he really when compared to the rest of us? The first hole of fill that leads us towards Bruce's current strength levels is the inherent issues and overall deceptions that his written program presents that he eventually wouldn't do once having donned the cape and cow. Even if he was doing everything at an elite level like deadlift lifting 620 pounds for multiple sets of 5, lightly deadlifting 310 pounds for 30 reps, and setting Olympic records for running before breakfast, he simply doesn't have the time to do it all. You see, Bruce's workouts have him working out from anywhere from 3.5 to well over 5 hours a day, along with him running Wayne Enterprises and constantly keeping the city in check night after night, and eventually the entire Justice League as his scope expands to keeping the entire Earth safe from harm. While he certainly did hard training before putting on the costume, he simply would be running into too much of a time limitation on being able to juggle all of his responsibilities. And even if he was able to squeeze in a grueling workout every day, beyond his time limitation comes an even bigger problem. That is the limits of his humanity, his human biology. And as a human, everything about his body and including his muscles, would need time to rest and repair, let alone build themselves up to be bigger and stronger than everyone else. The thing about a heavy lifting schedule like Batman's is he would be breaking apart his muscles so frequently that there's almost no natural way for them to get bigger to grow. This is because after an intense workout, science shows that it generally takes anywhere from 24 to 72 hours for a muscle to fully heal and bolster itself up, with that number only rising the more intense you get, until you finally reach a point of rhabdomyolysis. Normally, if you work out and don't rest, your muscles may piecemeal themselves back together, but they won't get stronger. On the other hand, if you still decide to keep going and pushing yourself to reach the point where you create so much damage to a muscle that it's truly unable to put itself back together, instead being so severely damaged that it is just dead, well, it begins leaking some of its protein goodness into the bloodstream causing a swift kidney failure. As bad as this is, it can get even worse, as this worsening to the point of exhaustion and eventual breakdown also goes for Batman's nervous system. Since the nerves are responsible for firing the muscles in the first place, they too get burned out, and under the weight of Batman's crazy schedule, will quickly cross the line of no longer being able to even tell the muscles to contract, no longer being able to move or think, but 
Batman may have a way around this, a way that also dictates exactly what type of strength training he would do, as well as put a cap of sorts on his strength limits. In order to fight crime and leap across rooftops, Bruce can't just build muscle for the sake of looking good or big. Instead, he would need to specifically work towards the goal of increasing his muscle's speed, force, or otherwise power through obsessively training something that is often overlooked. Whenever we see Bruce in a tight spot, more than stamina, even more than size, we almost always see him needing to exert an extreme amount of force at once. When a building was on fire and the people inside were more or less left to die, he pushed over a water tower to put out the flames. When he needed to evacuate a kid from a crashing plane, he simply kicked off the door. Or that time when he pushed a giant five-ton penny and used it as a rolling weapon. Bruce needs size, yes, but even more he needs to be able to use that muscle. You see, as a person's muscle size increases whenever they cause damage to the threads or myofibrils of their muscle, which in turn increases their thickness and number, growing the muscle, this is just a side effect of the true focus of Batman's workouts. While well, having big, sculpted muscles sounds great, Bruce would also need to focus on the force behind his muscles, or otherwise the very thing that allows him to overcome any extreme situation, being his motor neurons. The sole reason why smaller, less muscular lifters can lift significantly more than hulkish bodybuilders, and why Batman can lift giants like Bane, is because they have more motor neurons telling their muscles it's time to generate force at any given time. Because they practice lifting lots of weights fast, not for a burn, not to swell their muscles, and look like a Greek god awkwardly flexing their way across the pool, but simply to force their nervous system to contract their muscles to the max right now, thus forcing the nerves connected to those muscles to shower them with chemicals telling them it's go time. Basically, you are as fast, as forceful as your motor neurons. Then as the muscles rest and perhaps get bigger, the nerves go to work increasing how fast they themselves become active, how many of them are activated at once, and most importantly, increase how hard they can tell the muscles to contract. As much of a focus that Batman needs to have on fast and heavy workouts, Batman's strength to be able to rip off the door of an airplane or lift a vending machine means that his workouts need to equally prioritize the type of muscle fibers he's building. When it comes to a person's strength, there's three types of muscle fibers that they have. Type 1 being slow moving and slow to fatigue fibers for long distance running. Type 2A that is faster and still doesn't fatigue as much, used for activities such as walking. And Type 2B that's fast to exhaust, but will totally allow Batman to rip the steel panel off a speeding train, or resist the pull of a jet engine. For all the running that he is said to do in training, and looking at the sheer force he's required to output on a daily basis, Bruce would need to pack on as much Type 2B fibers that he can, and fast. Which in another insane advantage over most people, Bruce has a unique focus on how to build this much muscle. Within the muscle exist special cells, cells that solely dictate how fast an individual can build muscle, and is the difference between someone like Bruce literally gaining 50 pounds of muscle in a couple months, while most others take a full year to gain 20. You see, whenever activated, due to the stress of an intense workout, these special cells, or satellite cells, go about adding more nuclei to the muscles. Nuclei that allow the muscles to get bigger and bigger. So the more nuclei you have, the more muscle you can quickly build at any given time. As certain individuals like Bruce go to drastic circumstances to induce their bodies to produce and store way more nuclei in their muscles than is otherwise natural. With his skills and split time, normally Batman's strength limits rival that of being just under the most elite athletes, being able to squat 525 pounds for 10 sets of 5, or doing tricep extensions for somewhere around 300 pounds. But Bruce has found a way to burst through those limits and achieve a far greater level. A level that allows him to pull a speeding two and a half ton car to a dead stop, catch the Batmobile from falling off a bridge, bench press a 2,600 pound coffin through six feet of rain drenched soil, and crush 
concrete with a hand grip of 12,000 pounds per square inch. Similar to how individuals in my family thought I was having fun time in my bedroom for days on end, when I was actually pulling my hair out through never-ending editing sessions, Batman's concocting something pretty interesting down in that Batcave. Steroids. Specifically Bruce in his quest for justice and having to go out night after night at some point has tested different types of steroids and has closely watched their effects on him like the trained scientist he is. And ho oh ho boy do these things help. Steroids or specifically the effects of anabolic steroids act as a synthetic testosterone. Testosterone that would allow Bruce to quickly decrease the amount of recovery time his muscles would need, drastically increase the amount of nuclei within his muscles, and basically allow him to build new muscle way faster. All the while allowing him to quickly burn away any excess fat. But there's a downside to it. While giving him increased strength and recovery, most any anabolic steroid tends to shut down someone's natural production of testosterone that may take months to years to come back once they're off of it. Causes them to have high blood pressure, increases the size of their heart and causes heart diseases, ages them faster, and can do irreversible damage to the organs. It's for these reasons that Bruce, as the chemist and scientist that he is, is constantly going so far as to create his own steroids and testing them for their effects, hoping to find one that helps him more than it will ever hurt him. It's only in extreme cases that we see Bruce's sense of saving others at any cost to himself take hold, such as the instance where he failed to lift a large piece of rubble off of a drowning girl, and heartbroken turned to a new super enhancement drug offered to him by the girl's father, known as Venom. Not soon after, everything about Batman's appearance became warped by the drug, as he became far more aggressive, soon locking himself in the Batcave in order to wane himself off of his addiction, going back to subtler means and new equipment to overcome his limits. So overall, Batman without any performance enhancing drugs is as strong as or is just under the most elite Olympic athletes when it comes to darn near anything. However, when it comes to Batman who is likely always testing some sort of new way to increase his strength through science and sometimes other means, he simply exists on a whole other level. Being able to pull off physical feats well beyond the realm of normal, putting his average strength somewhere between the realm of just above the best in the world, to shredding his way through sewer grates, tunneling through the earth like a human drill, and absolutely taking anyone out with his bare hands, including titans that give Superman trouble, pummeling them into the ground. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. As we've gone over in Batman's series, Batman is so smart that he has created his own multi-billion dollar Iron Man suit of sorts to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with gods like Darkseid, being supported by his company whose riches are at a far bigger number than you would expect. So you might want to check out this video in the Batman series next. See you in the next one.